Ryan, he joins us right now from the beautiful city of Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Congressman, good morning to you. Morning, Gretchen and guys. How you doing this morning? Yeah. Great to have you. Hey, were your ears burning last night because uh, while the, the Democrats did not take the high road, they uh, turned you and Mitt Romney into punching bags here at the DNC night one? Well, this is what you expect when you have a president who cannot run on his record. What you did not hear is that people are better off than they were four years ago. What you did hear were simply attacks against their opponents. They don't have a record they can run on, so hope and change has become attack and blame, right. smear and fear. That's the kind of campaign they're going to run. We're offering a positive vision, bold solutions to get people back to work. So it doesn't surprise me, to be quite honest with you. Uh, Chairman, I, I heard a lot about spending. I heard a lot about government programs. Uh, in fact, one of the statements was, and one of the beliefs for almost the same theme through all the, the speakers was, you know, we only belong, all, all belong to one thing, and that is government. We saw Governor Mitt Romney's tweet to that saying, we don't belong to government, the, the government works for us, essentially. Uh, what is, what's your reaction? That's exactly what I would have said, which is, the government works for us, not the other way around. But this is in perfect keeping with President Obama's philosophy of a government-centered society, of a government-driven economy. And so it doesn't really surprise me that they say this. It also kind of gives us a glimpse, Brian, of what a second term would look like if President Obama got one. But how do you respond uh, to the people who actually do believe that the government you know, is helpful to them? Because a lot of people are arguing that we're approaching this tipping point in our society where when we get right. to 50% or more of the people who are receiving some sort of a government handout, that it's really hard to reverse that. I mean, who's going to say no to government aid and help when it's in dollar bills? I'd say two things, Gretchen. Number one, just because we believe in limited government doesn't believe, mean we believe in no government. We believe in limited, effective government. But we also believe that the role of government is to protect our natural rights and to promote equality of opportunity so that we can make the most of our lives and leave independent, self-sufficient lives. An upward mobile society, a, a, a safety net that helps people who cannot help themselves, help people get back on their feet. That's very different than what I think President Obama is moving us towards, which is much more of a cradle-to-grave kind of welfare state, where they see the goal of government is equalizing the results of our lives, not promoting equal opportunity, but equal outcome. Very different philosophy. I think you see that philosophy alive, and that philosophy leads us to like we've said, a government-centered society with a government-driven economy, and that doesn't grow jobs. That doesn't work. It's what Europe has, and look what Europe's gotten. They've got a debt crisis. Sure. So if we keep copying this European philosophy and these European economics, we'll get European results. Hey, I don't know if you were uh, watching Colorado television yesterday, but a local Colorado television reporter asked the president, you know, uh, sir, how would you grade yourself after these first four years? Here's what he answered. Listen. Your party says you inherited a bad situation. Mm -hmm. You've had three and a half years to fix it. What grade would you give yourself so far for doing that? You know, uh, I, I would say incomplete. We're seeing this not just here in the United States, but around the world. Uh, I mean, Europe is uh, going through a very difficult time. Uh, parts of Asia, even China, are going through a difficult time right now. I don't think, um, Congressman, the average person would like to think that after four years, the president's grade is incomplete. They'd like results. Well, you know, Steve, I think what this means is he's just going to give us more of the same. Incomplete means I want to keep taking the country in the direction that I've taken it. Look at where we are. 23 million people struggling to find work. Nearly one in six Americans in poverty today. It's not working. It's a failed agenda. We have answers to get us in the right track, to get this debt under control, to get this economy growing. That's the Romney plan for a stronger middle class. It's a five-point plan to get people back to work, to have higher take-home pay, to stop spending money we don't have. So I think what that incomplete answer means is he just plans on offering the country more of the same. All right. So, uh, well, actually, you, you do this because you talked to Chris Van Hollen. Okay. Yeah, about an hour ago, uh, Congressman Van Hollen, I know you know him well. You sit on the Budget Committee together. Uh, and he's going to actually play you in debate prep with the Vice President, Joe Biden. And uh, so I asked him earlier about the preps. Listen to this and then your response. Sit next to Paul Ryan every day in the Budget Committee. I know how he likes to present the argument, so I hope I can be of some use to the Vice President in that area. Well, I think Paul is a good debater. The question is the use of facts on the budget, and I think we're going to hear a lot more about that as we know that in his acceptance speech, uh, there was a lot of fact checking going on the next day. So I think it's going to be important to hold people to the facts uh, as we go through these debates. 
So I think he said the word facts at least four times in that. Uh, are you nervous <clears throat> that they're going to come after you with, with their facts? Look, I stand behind everything that was in my speech, number one. Number two, the fact is President Obama has failed on this economy. The fact is he has not led on the budget at all. The fact is the Senate hasn't passed a budget in three years. And the problem is the facts as they are today are not good for the president and his reelection prospects. So they have to go to fear and smear, attack and blame. That's what I think we're going to get. Look, Chris is a good guy. I like him quite a bit personally. We've right. debated each other for many years. Um, and, and Joe Biden's a, a very experienced debater. He's done more of these debates than I think anybody else around. And so I think that what they're trying to do is change the narrative away from their failed policies to anything but that. Well, I mean, uh, the one thing they keep, they keep bringing up is the fact that you're not, you're not accurate with some of your statements. So what you're saying is they are way Look, off base because I'm seeing a theme build. They're way off base. They're talking about Janesville, Wisconsin, my hometown. No one could accuse President Obama of shutting down the factory that we have in Janesville. But President Obama came to that factory and said that he would lead efforts to keep it open for 100 years. That when the factory was actually shut down, he said he would lead a retooling effort for factories like Janesville to get people back to work. No one's working there. It's still shut down. So what we're pointing out are the inconvenient truths of this administration is that when the president ran for office, he made all these empty promises, all these lofty promises that filled people with hope. And now we're learning three and a half years later, they're broken promises. They didn't materialize. And they don't like those facts as they confront them. Right. Who's playing Joe Biden in your debate prep or who will? It will we'll be announcing that shortly. Uh oh. Well, what about you can now? do it right now? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I got some Come time on. on my hands. <laughs> <laughs> I, guess I, I, think that's I guess it's a no. Well, it has to be somebody who, who sometimes just speaks <laughs> no. off the cuff. It, it'll be somebody who really knows what he's doing. <laughs> oh, okay. that, that'll be interesting. All right.